Hello, my name is Guillermo Gallego, and in this video, we will take a look at the history and evolution of the topic of image intensity reconstruction from events. So remember that uh, the DVS, so the dynamic vision sensor, was uh, commercially available, and the journal paper came out in around 2008, so 2008, 2009. Uh, well, a few years later, there were already some papers trying to do image reconstruction with the, with the DVS, right? And probably the first one is this one from 2011 from uh, Kuk et al. Uh, and collaborators, so people from the Institute of Neuroinformatics in Zurich. And yeah, this is kind of one of the first images that were uh, reconstructed from the events, and it's basically the uh, part of a keyboard. Um, then not, not much happened until maybe 2014, and this was the year of the panoramas, because there was a CVPR workshop paper uh, presenting the Tuco 3D, which is a, a camera that has, a, sorry, a device that has two uh, rotating um, line DVSs, and then they are able to obtain events, and then with some periodic conditions, they are able to integrate the events and obtain the 360 degree panoramas, um, such as this one, right? So this is grayscale reconstructed from, from the events. And then there was also a paper at the British Machine Vision Conference 2014 by the group of uh, Andrew Davison at Imperial College. And they also showed kind of uh, image intensity reconstruction from the events at the same time that they were doing uh, tracking of the orientation of the camera. So this is kind of the uh, parallel tracking and mapping, so sort of three degrees of freedom slam paper. And in, in that, the mapping part consists of building this panorama or mosaic. Uh, we fast forward and then now we are at um, two years later, 2016, many things happened. There was a paper published at the Winter uh, Conference on Applications on Computer Visions, a paper by Barwa and collaborators from Rice University, and they were basically showing um, video reconstruction without uh, having to estimate motion. And they did it at uh, two kilohertz, which is very impressive. And then there was a paper at CVPR, so the Conference on Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition, also by the group at uh, Imperial College. And they were estimating image intensity at the same time that they were estimating optical flow. Then in around September, there was uh, again the uh, BMBC, so the British Machine Vision Conference, and there was a paper by a group in Graz, uh, and they were doing uh, like Barwa, they were doing image reconstruction without having to estimate the motion, not even optical flow. And later, um, that year during ECCB, so the European Conference in Computer Vision, there was a paper basically generalizing this 2014 uh, work. And by the same author, they were instead doing three degrees of freedom slam, they were doing it in six degrees of freedom of the camera. And at the same time that they estimate the, the camera pose and the depth of the scene, they were estimating, uh, they needed also to estimate this grayscale value. Okay, so that's up to 2016, then let's move on to 2017, because this paper, uh, this was at the Robotics and Automation Letters. It, it actually came out in December, but was officially published in December 2016, but officially published in 2017, and they were showing that uh, you don't need image reconstruction to do uh, motion estimation such as SLAM, but with the output of the system, then you can do some uh, uh, image reconstruction. And basically, it's a, a generalization or using the similar, very similar equations taking into account depth as the these, this work from 2014 the work from Key Metal. Okay, so that's for 2017. Then we move on to 2018, and there was this paper at the Asian Conference in Computer Vision, so sorry, there was a C here, by uh, a group in uh, Australia, by Cedric Schirling and uh, Robert Mahoney, 
basically they show um, image reconstruction only using temporal filters, no spatial information. And that's very, very interesting work. Then we're going to move on to 2019. And here we have two works at CVPR. One of them is the work by Henri Rebecca and so collaborators from Zurich. And um, yeah, they showed impressive results using a deep learning method, supervised deep learning. Um, and then there was also a group by uh, from Korea and they were showing um, image reconstruction using generative adversarial networks, which is a popular technique nowadays in deep learning. But the results, well, unfortunately, they were not as good as the supervised one. And then we move now to 2020. Well, he generalized and he improved the system that he had at CVPR and uh, showed it at uh, the journal PAMI. So pattern analysis and machine intelligence. And there was also a paper by Cedric uh, Alpi and collaborators on, uh, on the winter application of, uh, of computer vision conference. Yeah, basically they were uh, making the this network that were kind of expensive. They were trying to simplify it and make it as lightweight as possible. So that's for the story of uh, brightness reconstruction using grayscale. And now how about color? Well, there was uh, the idea of the, using the interactive maps from Cook et al. in 2011. Then when a color sensor came out in 2017, um, this was the same idea of uh, reconstruction was applied to, to the three different types of uh, events, right? Uh, or in this case, four, because it was red, green, blue, and white. Then we move uh, to 2019, and there was a workshop um, at CVPR. And in this workshop, there was presented a color event data set. And they recorded scenes, and they also applied the algorithms that uh, had been devised before uh, to show image reconstruction with uh, colored events. So this is the, the work from uh, the Asian Conference in Computer Vision 2018, just applied to color. And this is the, the output of the neural network from Henri um, applied to color events. Yeah, and then Henri basically in, in the PAMI paper, he also showed some uh, uh, color examples with high resolution. Um, okay, so that's kind of for a short history. Uh, how about uh, can we try to say something about the assumptions, scenarios, and classify all these methods? So there are basically um, two types of methods, right? One's the, I mean, there are different dimensions that we can classify them. But if we look at the motion, some algorithms need to know uh, the motion to do image reconstruction, and others, they do not need to, to know the motion. Right? They don't need to estimate the camera motion or optical flow or any other type of motion to do uh, image reconstruction. Among the ones that they need to know, some of them, they we've seen, they do some ego motion, so they need to know um, yeah, some form of uh, three, six degrees of freedom motion of the camera, and this can be like visual odometry or SLAM. And others like uh, the one from Patrick Pardo, 2016, they just need to, to know the apparent motion, so optical flow on the image plane. doesn't need to know the, the camera motion and the depth of the scene. And basically, this type of methods that they do SLAM, uh, because kind of slam works with the assumption uh, that uh, you need to collect evidence over time and basically the, the scene is static. Whatever is dynamic will not be easily 3D reconstructed. So, so far these methods that are, that they need to know motion and they use slam, they work on static scenes and the rest, the ones that either assume that they know optical flow or that, that they do not need to know the motion, they work in the most general scenario, which is the dynamic scenes. Static uh, scenes, it also means that the reconstruction uh, of this image intensity doesn't happen uh, on the image plane. It happens on a keyframe or an external map. That's the map that we are building. And in this map, we are also reconstructing the intensity. 
Whereas the other ones, um, the ones that they do not need to, uh, to know motion, they basically, um, or optical flow, they are just working on the image plane. <coughs> so the reconstructed intensity is kind of um, of the same the same type. So on the left we would have, for example, the, the, the mosaics, and on the right we have reconstructions of, of the same size as um, the image plane or a, a super resolved version. But there is no such thing as a mosaic here on the right. And now these are just some references of papers, uh, so conferences and years that fall on each category. Just some of them. And this is basically the same that we explained in the previous uh, diagram with, with text. That if you need to know the motion or you need to know the apparent motion, so the optical flow, or you don't need to know the motion. And in the last category, where we can also distinguish between model-based approaches and uh, learning-based approaches. So the word, whether you are learning some function <coughs> or you have some handcrafted uh, um, or model-based uh, method. <coughs>